for Jesus, everybody. Do me a favor. Go grab five people and tell them God's going to bless you today. God's going to bless you.
scripture for this week. You know it. Nahum chapter 1 verse 9. Halabashandi O C. I said Nahum chapter 1 verse 9. Here's your word for the week. I said Nahum chapter 1 verse 9. What do you conspire against the Lord? God said, I'm going to end it. But guess what else he wants you to know? It ain't going to come a second time. Oh, come on. That's what I came to tell you. Whatever you was dealing with, God said it'll never come back if you give the right shout. Never. They'll never up a bubble shot. That sickness ain't coming back. That disease ain't coming back. That lie ain't coming back. That heartbreak ain't coming back. That disappointment ain't coming back. God said it'll never. That's the word. Amen. 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 Let down your road, say it ain't coming back. God said it.
they'll never be able to do that to you again. Tell them, get out my way. Tell somebody, get out my Never praise him.
those hands. I sing praises to your name. Tell him. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. For your name, for your name is great <laughs> and greatly to be prayed. Come on, lift your hands. I sing praises. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. praises to your name. Oh, Lord. for your name is great. For your name is great and greatly and greatly to be praised. Tell them again, I sing praises. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Praises sing praises to your name, oh Lord, oh, Lord. oh. Praises, to your praises to your name, oh Lord, <laughs> for your Lift those hands. One time, lift those hands high, please. For you are great. You do me because so. Tell him. There is no one else like you. Worship. There is no Clap those hands for Jesus, everybody. Clap those hands for Jesus. Hook three people and tell them I'm excited about your future. Maybe seated in the presence of the Lord. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. The 
Sometimes you just wait on him. Come on. For your name. Your name is <laughs> and great. those hands with Jesus, please. Clap those hands with Jesus. I say clap those hands. He's a good God. Woo, he's good. Jehovah Jireh hands high, please. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, <laughs> you hands for Jesus. Klebaba shatima ero mosikia ero basha mo 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 more than enough for me. I don't need nobody. I got you. If I lose everything and still have Jesus.
those hands if you mean that. Clap those hands if you mean that. All right, look at somebody real quick and tell them it's time to have more. Let's make it personal. Prophesy to them and say it's your time to have more. Lay hands on your seven to clap. It's my time to have more. Can you say it with a look of confidence? I, I want you to understand that death and life is in the power of your what? No. That's right. So come on, say it with confidence. Say it's my time. It's my time. To have more. To have more. Lay hands on yourself and say, this is not my destiny. This is not my destiny. This is not my end. This, is not my end. This, ain't my this ain't my future. It's my time, it's my time. To, have more. to have more. Clap your hands if you believe that again. Well, of course, that's where we were, and, you know, we talked about on Tuesday night how that God gave Adam the garden. And remember how I told you that uh, uh, working hard was never a part of the blessing of God. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, New King James Version, make sure that's where we are. But Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, the New King James Version lets us know, Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you should not eat of it, curses the ground for your sake. In what? In toil. Come on, what does it say? In what? In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. So we understand that working hard and toiling did not come until the curse came. And I want you to understand that. Let that register in your spirit. It is not God's will for you to be working two and three jobs. It is not God's will for you to work 30 years and then retire and then got to get a second job to keep making ends meet. Look at somebody say, the devil is a liar. <laughs> Again, the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no what? And I believe it goes a little deeper and says, hallelujah. It says the blessing of the Lord in NIV, it says the blessing of the Lord brings wealth without paying for toil for it. So I really want you to understand and get to a place in your spirit where you recognize that if I'm toiling, if I'm working hard, if I'm doing so much work that it's hindering me from enjoying life, I am not in God's best. Now let's be honest in here. It is very hard to have a happy home when the husband and the wife got to work. Y'all quiet. Y'all won't talk bad. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you. It affects when you working eight hours, she working eight hours, do you want to come home and cook, want to come home and clean, everything messed up. Your sex life going to be jacked up, your food life going to be jacked up, because everybody tired. Amen. When that, listen, the number one cause of the breakup of a relationship is finances. Amen. I don't care about love. Love don't pay no bills. You better hear me. All right. So the blessing of the Lord, God wants to bring you to a place where you're able to enjoy life. Where you're able to enjoy. Amen. And I want to declare hallelujah over this place that your ladder going to be greater than your former. Amen. I want to declare that whatever you have experienced now is nothing compared to what God's about to do in your life. Give me Job 36, 11. That's a good scripture. Job 36, 11. Just hit me right there in my belly. Job 36, 11. If they obey and serve him. Remember I told you that God gave Adam that garden, that garden was functioning. All he had to do was do what God told him. Look at somebody say, just do what he tell you. Find you another neighbor. Say, just do what he tell you. All right? Now, that's another thing you have to make sure. Do not measure what God tell you to do by somebody else. Because just because God told them to do it don't mean he told you to do it. And you have to know your own personal dedication so you can hear from God by yourself. He said, if they obey and serve him, you're going to spend your days in prosperity. Look at somebody and say, he talking about me. And the Bible declares that your years are going to be in pleasure. So I want you to get this in your spirit, that God wants you to have more. Toiling, working hard, going through the struggle is not God's best for your life. You are not supposed to be working hard like the world. Come on, y'all. You got to get tired of struggling. Tell your neighbor, I'm tired of struggling. 
So you get to Luke chapter 5, verse 4. You get to Luke chapter 5, verse 4. Look at what he says. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep. Let down your nets for a catch. Look at the next verse. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have what? Master, we have what? We have what? We have what? We have taught how long? On and caught nothing. Working and can't show the fruit of it. Ten years at a job. Twenty years at a job. Thirty years you gave a job your life to make somebody else rich. Y'all don't got to hear me. I'm trying to help you. And you don't have nothing to show for. it. That will not be my destiny. God's delivering you from the system right now. That's a word for somebody in here. I break the stronghold of the system that tries to make you feel like you can't survive without them. See, some of you are afraid to step out and obey God because you don't know how to live by faith. Yeah, I'm telling the truth. I told y'all, I keep telling y'all, what is living by faith? Living by faith is living on the edge. What you mean living on the edge? Living by faith is living like you at the top of a roller coaster and it's about to fall. Living by faith is living trusting him with knots in your stomach. Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but I know you got me. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Don't know how this bill gonna get paid, but I know I ain't gonna get put out. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Somebody say, I believe God. So here they were, they were laboring. And remember I told you that because you know who God is, somebody say the word, the word. is my advantage. my advantage. Remember I told you that you have to exalt the word above everything? Or right, everything got to begin with the word. Remember the Bible declares that he exalts his word above his name. That's powerful. Because his name don't exist without his word. Everything is held up, the Bible say, by the word of his power. Not by the power of his word. But by the word of his power. Everything with God is the word. In the beginning was the See, y'all don't understand everything is a word. You're sitting on a word right now. Chair. You walked on a word in here. Floor. Y'all get it later. You're breathing a word. Air. Y'all gonna get it later. Everything that God did, he did it by a your deliverance is in a word. Your breakthrough is in a word. Your turnaround is in a word. And if there's gonna be a change in your life, all you need is a word. Everything is a word. You ain't nothing about a shot. You ain't nothing but a word with a body. Hmm? That's why in him you live. In him you move. That's Acts 17, 28. And in him you what? Have your being. Remember the Bible said that I'd rather you be hot or cold? He said, but because you're lukewarm, I'm going to do what? Spit you out my mouth. What that mean? What that mean? What that mean? God gonna spit. What that mean? God gonna spit me out of His mouth. What that mean? God is a spirit. Spirit don't have spit. Break it down, prophet. Break it down. What that mean? God gonna spit me out of His mouth. God said, God, 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 God say, I will cease speaking anything concerning you. <laughs> Only reason you living right now is because God spoke a word and said, Get up. Hey, y'all ain't talking back to me in here. But let me tell you what's so powerful about God's word. When God speaks a thing, God never has to repeat himself. Because whenever he speaks, it is eternal. Because God lives in the eternal now. Let me help you get this. God only said to the earth one time let there be light 
6,000 years and went by. And the sun is still shining because he said one time.